Hey everyone, so I recently saw an interesting report in the Wall Street Journal, no less, saying that we wouldn't be seeing any kind of hardware revision for the Nintendo Switch in 2018, and that instead we'd be looking at, uh, well, extra peripherals connecting via the USB-C port. Now, whether it's USB or not, Nintendo is doing some impressive stuff in terms of expanding the scope of the system with the Labo Cardboard Initiative, gaining a lot of plaudits from those who have had a play with it. So yeah, I do expect to see Switch being taken in new directions with ideas perhaps not targeted at core gamers. But with that said, maybe it won't appear this year, but I suspect we will definitely be seeing revised Switch hardware at some point in the not too distant future. In fact, in the very same Wall Street Journal report, we do get a hint about this from Nintendo itself. There's discussion of a February investor briefing where Nintendo CEO Tatsumi Kimishima expresses his desire to extend the Switch life cycle beyond the typical five to six years that we kind of see with a console generation. Delaying hardware revisions is cited in that report as a way of extending the longevity of the platform. But the base of it all is far more likely to be the question of economics. So Switch is based on a vanilla Tegra X1 processor from Nvidia. Vintage 2015 technology here, based on the 20 nanometer process from chip manufacturing giant TSMC. Now here's the thing, safe to say that 20 nanometers wasn't exactly a popular process. Nvidia experimented with it with the Tegra X1 but didn't stick with it for its desktop GPUs. Instead, the Pascal range of graphics hardware shifted to 16 nanometer FinFET as soon as it was viable for mass production. The likes of Apple and Qualcomm did use 20 nanometers in high quantities, but again moved on from the process quickly once something better was available. I mean, Apple used 20 nanometer all the way back on the iPhone 6, but dumped it for the 6S and never looked back. Switch has sold well, but not enough to maintain an enormous production facility on a process that nobody else really wants. So maybe it won't happen this year, but there'll come a point where Switch will be redesigned and it will move on to a better chip based on a superior process. And well, luckily for Nintendo, Nvidia has already made this succeeding product. Tegra X2 always looked like a bit of a weird product to me and not the best fit for Nvidia's plans for powering AI automotive systems. I mean, it does have an additional CPU cluster and there's a big boost to memory bandwidth, but not much has changed with the GPU. So it's a bit of a sideways step for Nvidia, but potentially a big leap forward for a second generation Switch. Now this is based on the 16 nanometer FinFET design, the same process used in PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. And this offers up a combination of both power efficiency advances and faster clock speeds. Combined with that memory bandwidth boost, it will provide an iterative but impressive enough upgrade for Switch. And there's a strong chance that games will just look better running on it automatically out of the box. Well, certain games anyway. Now, John recently took a look at the patch for Doom 2016 on Switch. It includes CPU utilization, optimizations, improved frame rates, and it has, of course, the same dynamic resolution scaler it launched with. Access to a new Tegra X2 processor with improved CPU and GPU clocks and more bandwidth will stabilize performance and potentially improve resolution. Those horizontal dynamic resolution scaling drops seen on Skyrim could be lessened. And yeah, let's not forget that Nintendo itself has been experimenting with dynamic scaling. Indeed, launch title, Zelda Breath of the Wild used it. But it's been used much more extensively in Super Mario Odyssey and perhaps most noticeably in Splatoon 2. DRS is a technology that has paid off handsomely for Microsoft with big out-of-the-box improvements on a bunch of games designed for the S that just run better on the X with zero developer input. And yet, funnily enough, Doom is one of those titles. With GPU resources in short supply on Switch, DRS is a great technology for Nintendo to utilize in the here and now, but to a certain degree, it also future-proofs today's games for better results on tomorrow's Switch hardware revisions. Which leads us on to another crucial aspect in maintaining and expanding Switch's lifespan, the state of docked play. 
So here's the thing, in a lot of our tech reviews for Switch games, we often point out that mobile play is pretty awesome, but docked action just falls a touch short, even if frame rates are actually higher than the portable equivalents. It's kind of contrary to logic, you might think, but it's all about that display. When gaming on the go, the high pixel density of the mobile screen hides a lot of deficiencies and technical cutbacks aren't so pronounced compared to a slightly improved experience on a massive 50-inch panel. Super Mario Odyssey then, it actually uses a relatively minuscule 640x720 resolution in mobile form, using reprojection to bump up the presentation to what looks like a full fat 720p. And you know what? It really looks pretty good. It holds up and crucially frame rate is solid. So in that sense, Nintendo is actually realizing that the mobile screen offers the chance to play with performance saving techniques and equalize the experience very closely to the docked output. But with that said, Mario's dynamic resolution on a 1080p or a 4K screen? Well, hmm. Even going back to Zelda, I mean 900p isn't bad, but scaled up on a 4K screen, well personally, I don't think it looks as good as it could. I love Switch, but for me it's a mobile machine first and foremost. Another example, Bayonetta 2. Smoother performance when docked, but 720p on my LG 4K OLED? Yeah, again, brilliant game, no doubt about it, but those jumbo pixels aren't really cutting it for me. And the point is this, if Nintendo is looking for a machine that can last beyond the usual five to six years, well, by 2021, 2022, we should expect 4K TVs to be everywhere. And low-res gaming when docked, I just don't think that's going to cut it. Now, perhaps we can look at Switch more as an evolving platform in exactly the same way that Xbox is currently transitioning. And that's where things get interesting, because while Tegra X2 looks like a shoe-in for a revised Switch, its successor, codenamed Xavier, actually has a silicon footprint that covers 97% of the area of the Scorpio engine in Xbox One X. In fact, this is the layout of the Xavier chip. Nvidia's priorities have shifted. Tegra's focus, assuming this is actually still a Tegra, well, that shifted to stuff like image recognition, AI, and it has a big, big CPU footprint. Now, this isn't viable for a portable console hybrid. So at some point, there's a good chance that we will be looking at custom Switch processors. Bespoke mobile chips Nvidia and Nintendo collaborate on with Switch as the primary focus. And this is entirely in line with what Nvidia will be doing for its next gen desktop GPUs. All of the AI and deep learning stuff, well, it's highly likely to be stripped out, saving silicon area for more gaming power. And to be fair, there's no need for Nintendo to piggyback onto an existing piece of Nvidia silicon. Switch is a runaway success now, not the gamble that it was when Nintendo was kind of regrouping after the relative failure of the Wii U. Now, we're big Switch fans here, and one year on, what's clear is that this system is punching above its weight. Back in January 17, John and I discussed the Switch reveal event we both attended, and we were kind of concerned that Nintendo had delivered a portable Wii U and little more. Now, we're happy to have been proved wrong there. I mean, you look at the Doom 2016 port and you realize that there's much more going on here. But that game also kind of puts the ceiling on what developers are realistically able to get out of it. Fundamentally, it's a mobile chipset being coaxed into producing some great results, but I do think that if Switch is to surpass that five to six year generational limit, we will have to see some kind of evolution from fixed hardware to a more fluid platform. In the here and now, the current model is selling like crazy, so Nintendo has the luxury of time, but I'll certainly be interested to see where they go next on the hardware level. And with that, I'm going to wrap this up. Please do like and subscribe to support the work we do here. And yes, of course, if you want to go further, consider joining our Patreon and get pristine quality video downloads in the process. But that's all from me for now. Thanks for watching.